YouTube, Topaz Jakes back for another daily review, and this one is to that Alicia Keys Holla You. Now, what she's singing about on here, man, is she's searching for the place where all of the struggling and all of the loneliness and all of the negativity will end in a spot where all of the greatness really begins. And with her saying hallelujah pretty much in the hook and everything, we all know that she's talking about heaven on here. And my thing about that is this, like as a people, we are led to believe that we have to struggle all the way through life. We have to take these beatings from white supremacy. We have to lose all the time in order for us to die and make it to heaven where everything's going to be alright, where we'll get the revenge for all of those who did us wrong because they went to hell and all of that. But you got to understand that that's nothing more than a form of control to keep you in line. See, this is the way that the Lord works. If you want something bad enough, He's going to give you everything you need to go out and get it. Yes, we're going to struggle and everything, but we don't have to die in order to get it. And we can actually live prosperous because we see other people living prosperous who's always beating up and killing us in the streets. See, here's a story that my uncle once told me, man. He said, so a guy was once stranded at sea. So he's sitting there, he's praying, he's hoping to be saved. And then a boat come past. And the guy says on the boat, yo, come on, we got you, hop on this boat. And the man stranded at sea says, you know what, nah, I'm cool because my Lord got me, my Lord is going to save me. And then a second boat comes to this man, like, yo, quit playing, hop up on here, man, we got you. And he says again to that second boat, yo, don't worry, my Lord got me, you can go on ahead. And ultimately, he drowns at sea, and when he dies, he sees the Lord, and he asks, Lord, why didn't you come to save me? And he said, I sent two boats to you, man, what more do you want from me? And that's the thing about this song, and ultimately, us as a people, man, you want to pray for something to happen to you, but yet, you're not going to put in the work, like, it's nice to pray for the end of your struggle and everything, but in the end, you have to go ahead and put in the work in order to conclude that struggle, in order to succeed. And the Lord's going to help you out, but you got to want it. Like for us as a people to stop getting slaughtered in the streets and such, and these people getting away with it, we have to band together our money, and it's not going to take a lot of us. If we band together our money, buy up some politicians to get protection for our people, but overall as a song, man, I definitely enjoyed that production, definitely enjoyed this overall track, one I definitely recommend people to go Go ahead and peep out. But this concludes today's review, and now we're going to jump into a brief instrumental from underground producer Hash Beats before we take some of your questions. <laughs> in these hip-hop bloodlines and stuff, man, that I've been telling y'all about. So I was asked, what is J. Cole's bloodline? So J. Cole is a descendant of, say, Jay-Z. Like, that's where he gets his lyricism from. But as we continue to trace back, then you gotta go to Tupac. Because there's a lot of comparison to his super emotional tracks and his super aggressive tracks. Like, if there was no hit em up there would be no fire squad. And even though J. Cole always admits that he's not a gangster, but yet he raps about street life, so therefore you trace it all the way back to N.W.A. Like, most rappers these days, you can trace them all back to N.W.A. Somebody asked me about Kendrick. Let's do this one in reverse. What starts out with N.W.A. turns into Dr. Dre, turns into Tupac, turns into Lupe Fiasco, and all of that equals Kendrick Lamar. And then a lot of people tend to ask, why is commercial rap so bad? And the reason in which you can trace it back to the bloodlines. See, what started off with gangster music, N.W.A., that gangster music evolved into the South with UGK, Outkast, Ghetto Boys, a whole bunch of Southern acts that all came about at around the same time period. And then the South evolved with No Limit and Master P, where that pretty much established that you don't have to be a super strong lyricist. If you got dope beats, dope hooks, and you can create overall solid songs, people will look past the fact that you're a lyrical liability. And then that formula fell into the wrong hands in Jermaine Dupri, even though I'm not going to attribute him D for L or them friends franchise boys here, but yet the next key part of the DNA is Soldier Boy, who is definitely an aspect of that. And who's the artist right now that fits that exact bloodline? Lil Yachty. I hope you enjoyed the show. You can follow me at Twitter up there, 
And you can go to downloadpads.com that's down there to read today's article.